Yeah, around this track for about five hours and done two k's, if that, a k and a half. It's pretty much tow, tow up the little hills, winch up the steep hills, and he can drive through the flat down hills. Well, if I was said. 10 words so far, I've said 30, and you've said about 25,000. <laughs> so, so far you're a bit ahead of us. <laughs> it was the second day of our camping trip up into Barrington Tops in New South Wales, and we just spent the night at Gummy Falls in the National Park section of Barrington Tops. It would definitely be one of our favourite campsites in the area. You've got a heap of nice little spots down along the creek and the waterfall, and then there's a few back up the hill in the bush. Hey Kai. Tell everyone what pa, what happened with Pa and his bed. What? Well, look at his bed. Do you know why his bed's like that? Why? Dad forgot the pole bag for the swag. So he just laid on top of it and put a tarp through his door over the top of him. And I laid with him. <laughs> How is it in there? Pretty comfy? Yeah, it actually is. The weather seems to be coming in pretty cloudy, it may rain, I think it was saying it might rain today, I don't know. Might go for a walk down the, down the hill there, have a look at Gummy Falls, then we'll pack up camp and head out of here, check out a few other things in the area today. You want to come down the waterfall and have a swim? Let's go. Here's Gummy Falls. That's where we did want to camp, there was people there but they left early. But our camp spot was still nice though, just up the hill there. Time for a nice warm swim to start the day. Once you're up the top part of that Barrington, at that 14, 1500 metres, it doesn't really matter what time of year, that water just stays absolutely freezing. After a swim and packing up camp, we made our way out of Gummy Falls to hit some more tracks for the day. After we left camp, we just followed the main bullet brush road out of Gummy Falls because that's the only one that's open to that Tuggalo's Trail is closed. Uh, and then we come back past Pole Blue Falls and now we're just making our way through this horse swamp trail. I've never been on it before, should it's a bit of a shortcut through the main road. Just pulled up here, just spotted this old bit of machinery here. Guys driving it. <laughs> I'm gonna get a quick look at it. What is it? Old grader? Yeah. Does it still work? Can, can, can you start it up? Oh, look. See, it actually works. I think it doesn't work. Whenever I got Kai with me, we always stop at things like these, get out, have a bit of a look around, have a break for a while. That way he's not sitting in the car for long periods of time getting bored. That tracker on brings you not too far out from the Furs, which is our next stop for the day. Stopped into the Furs for a quick look. Dad hasn't been here before and it's a pretty cool spot. See these massive pine trees, I think they're also called fir trees, pine trees. Um, 
last time we are here. Last time I was up the Barrington it was in winter and it was snowing and we came in here and it was just incredible in here, like all the snow falling down through all these trees. You can walk out to see there and sort of get this. Not too far from the Furs is a turn off to Bull Ridge Road. Definitely the most challenging track I've come across in the Barrington. After we left the Furs, we headed towards the Dingo Gate and then maybe about half a K. Oh yeah, Wallaby. Maybe about half a K before the Dingo Gate. We made a turn off onto Bull Ridge Road, it's called. And now, where we are now, this Bull Ridge Road is actually in the Stewart's Brook State Forest. It's not part of the Barrington Tops anymore. But it pretty much uh, descends right up the top of the Barrington area down into the Monanbrook or Moonanbrook River and then back up out the other side. It's like we did it on the last video, we did it in reverse. Uh, I'm doing it the other way this time, and Dad hasn't done it before. So. Yeah, pretty much descend all the way down to the valley and then back up the other side. It's a, it's a great fun track, but it gets really steep and uh, yeah, pretty rocky and rutted in certain sections. We're doing it this way because last time we had to winch up the other way and I uh, figured we'd be winching up again and just to do it in reverse, a bit different. I'm pretty much in first gear low range just the whole way down the mountain. I find that if I go into sometimes first a little bit too slow, but if I go into second and I'm having to use the brakes, it's constantly trying to run away from me on second low, so I normally just go that bit slower in first gear. It's, it's pretty rough and rocky and very steep. Can you put a big put a rock under that tire car? That's it. Made it to this pretty gnarly hill that we had to winch up last time. Like going down, it's not gonna be too bad, but it's still very very steep and very loose. And it gets quite rutted out down the bottom there. All right, here you go, Kite. Started filming. Twelve hour film, you Never cast story. Yeah, you're gonna take nine hours. Let's film it. I'm filming his body, if you can see. This is where the track definitely starts to become a bit more tricky. You really have to focus on picking that right line, getting it right, because this hill is very steep rocky and loose. You can see here my back wheel started to slide in a little bit. As soon as I feel that happening I turn those front wheels in as well so that both front and rear wheels are in the rut together. You want to avoid having one set of wheels in the rut and the other set out of the rut. He's running low on petrol. He's running low on petrol and that's why it's beeping. That is about to stop, I feel like. What is that sound? I'm really confused. It's very steep, loose, rocky. And like, down the bottom there you get a bit of a side angle. It's not too bad, but just when you're so steep and then you get those side angles, they never feel great. Yeah, the same thing happened to me, but I got mine going eventually.
Dave was up next, got down there without any problems. I do find that with him being in an automatic, it is that little bit easier for him. He's not have to worrying about the clutch. On this hill, I didn't have to use the clutch, but I was getting close. I was trying to rely solely on brakes and engine compression to get me down, avoid touching the clutch. But because him being in an automatic, he doesn't have to worry about that clutch and he can go that bit slower. But in saying that, I do find that the engine compression in my manual works better than the engine compression in his automatic and he is relying a bit more heavily on the brakes than what I am. After we got through that section, the track continues all the way down into the valley. It's a long way down. You just got hill descent after hill descent. The track is very rocky, rutted and loose, and because we don't have huge lift or tyres in our cars, we really are relying on picking those right lines so to avoid smashing too many rocks on the way down. The biggest thing is having those tyres aired right down, we're on about 15-16, and that'll help hold those lines and keep that traction. And the other thing is, we do both have underbody bash plates on our cars, so when you get that line wrong or you slip off a bit and hit a rock, you know you got that protection underneath so you're not going to smash something vital. Once you get down near the bottom, you can continue a little bit further to get to the river where you can have a swim, have some lunch, but it's just a dead end track there. The track continues but it's on private property. Rather than doing that, we decided just to head straight back up out of there. Our plan was to have some lunch up the top and then make the drive home for the afternoon. But as can sometimes happen when you're off road, things don't go to plan. Little do we know what a long afternoon we're in for. I originally thought it was going to be a relatively easy drive out of here without any problems but as sometimes happens the track had got a whole lot worse since we were there last time it was just so loose rocky rutted there's just no traction on it there's just no traction like it's just powder we're coming back up out of this bull ridge road now the other side but I'm in a bit of trouble on this hill just so loose might be worthwhile just winching over that here you go wait there then I'll park your stuff I'll go off that tree just there <laughs> thing over the shackle otherwise it's just going to slide straight down to the car I tried to drive this section a couple of times but I really wasn't getting that close and I was starting to put stress on the car so I was out with a winch for a relatively easy winch up that rock step there I got up over that rock step and as far as I could towards that tree before I ran out of winch room. I decided to have another go taking off from there. The biggest problem was how loose it was. There's just so little traction trying to take off on this surface.
getting the momentum because when you want to take off in a spot they just start spinning second go i got going again but it wasn't long before i was stuck back out with the winch i was pretty much relying solely on the winch pulling up this hill you can see when i try to get going again i just started spinning wheels on those rocks So a bit lower inflation can help you. And what do you got in mind there? Sort of 14 pound or what? Yeah, 14, 30. It ended up being a massive effort to get up that hill. What a winch. Two two separate trees and I think the biggest difference in the end was I, I was having my tyres at 16 psi I put them down to about 13 14 I just seemed to feel that little bit more the problem is like this hill is just so slippery and then once you come to a stop on it just so hard to get going again as soon as you try and go you just kick rot kick rocks and dig a hole dad's gonna let his tyres right down his Toyo tyres seem to be a little bit harder they can seem to go a bit lower so I'm gonna put his down to 12 I'm just going to try and hold that line all the way up and see how we go. There's 12 power. This is a hill where it's going to require power. I'll give it a rev. Don't worry about that. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. <laughs> just whether or not it's going to, I don't know, like it might come up. It's a big ask. It's going to be another hour of winching if uh, he doesn't. So here we go. Uh, turn it off if you want. Yeah, you've got about six or seven coils on there now. So I'll try and get it back in a two wheel drive, will I? I'm pretty much going to have to winch all the way up this hill. We've got an extension strap onto a winch. So I guess the first 10 meters, then I'll take the extension strap off and just do the winch up to that tree. And then we've probably got like another 30, 40 meters to the top. Watching the footage back, Dad and I both agreed he drove a bit too hard and held it for too long in that one spot. After just spending over an hour winching my car up, you feel that pressure and that need to drive a bit harder so that hopefully you won't have to do the same thing again. But you drive that bit harder in the hope that you'll make it and we definitely saw the consequences of what can happen. You start driving harder and things start breaking. We initially thought it was a broken front CV slash axle, but when we had a closer look, we realized it actually blown the whole front diff. There was a crack through the whole thing and there was a hole in the side of it. Just tell me, steer me through what I gotta do with my wheels as I get going. Yeah, I'll talk to you. And so again, the long recovery out of there. Blown front diff, it was back to rear wheel drive only, two wheel drive. There was a lot of hills in front of us. We didn't even know we were gonna be able to get him out of there. All we could do was start trying and see how we went. Because he was back to two wheel drive, if you try to give any drive wires winching, it was only those rear wheels and they were just digging holes in the ground making it harder for himself. 
So all the winching we did was pretty much just a dead pull of his car up the hill. He couldn't provide any drive. It was a long, slow process. Well, I'll, I might be able to hook a snatch strap up to the back of mine and help pull you up a bit. But you'll see that hill in front of us now. Like, like here you, or in front of your car? In front of my car. Like, then, then they're nowhere near as bad, but they're still hills. Yeah, how long do you reckon that? Like, mm. yeah, well, what? Well, it's probably three hours since we turned up here, in, <laughs> including mine and yours. Now it's been about three hours on this hill. <laughs> oh, I love it, buddy. <laughs> Making mates of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm not taught a bit, so I see this is. It had to happen to us one day. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give her a go, eh? Yeah. You'll it's been about three hours since we started this hill, like including my car. Now Dad's car, it's about three hours and we're up this section of the hill. I think this <laughs> this is the worst part of this climb out of the valley. We've still got plenty more hills to come, but then they're, they're not as bad as this. So we're gonna we'll just take it as we come. Hopefully get most of them in two wheel drive still. Just gonna try and drive this last little bit of the hill and then we're gonna have some lunch up here. It's already nearly three o'clock. Even though we're well off the worst bit of the hill, there's hardly really a hill in front of him at all here. But he tried to drive it in two wheel drive and those rear wheels just did nothing. It just dug holes and went nowhere. I can't believe how useless are in two wheel drive. It's just that real powdery stuff here. Yeah. Um, we go back to inches, don't we? No, I'm going to oh, hook right. my car up to yours. Oh, you're going to hook your car to mine? Yeah, less painful and it'd be fine to do that from here. In the end, this recovery came down to three different methods. On the steep, loose hills, I couldn't tie them up. It was just going to be too much stress on both cars. That was where we had to winch, and that's what took the longest and the slowest. On the smaller hills, I was able to tow him up, and then on the flat and downhill bits, he could drive in two-wheel drive. But his car trying to get up any of those hills in two-wheel drive was not really doing too much. Made it up the top of that hill, had a bit of lunch. Now we're gonna keep trying to get up out of this valley. He's gonna try, cut this first hill into a drive and that'll put us a bit of an idea of how well he's gonna go. So he's just gonna try and do what he can in two wheel drive. And then what he, what he can't do, I'll tow. And if it's a real bad hill, we're just gonna have to do the winching again. But I don't think this hill's, I think we're going to be able to either do towing or him driving in two wheel drive. You're going with a guess that we've knocked over the worst of that track, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. This might be, I first looked at it and I thought it looked bungal, but I think I can do that. At the time, we just didn't realise how many more steep hills are in front of us and how much winching that was going to involve. I drove up this first hill in front of him and then he'd come up behind me in two wheel drive as far as he could. He got a little bit of the way, but then he just came to a stop, so I had to reverse back down, hook him up, tie him up to the top again. A couple of things we did wrong, especially in this towing part here. It's easier to see them when you watch back the footage and you realise what you did wrong, which can be a good thing, you learn, you do better next time. But one thing is we definitely should have put a dampener blanket on the snatch strap when we were doing the towing in case something let go, it pushes it down to the ground. We did it in all the winching, but I just completely forgot about it during the towing, so definitely need to do that next time. The other thing I saw was, while most of the time we hook the snatch strap up relatively straight without too many twists in it, a couple of times it was twisted around a few times, which I don't think is a huge deal, but you're definitely better off having it straight. On the front of Dad's car, we hooked him up using an equaliser strap, which is just a tree trunk protector. That way he's hooked up to both sides of the car, you got a nice, straight, strong pull. After we got up that smaller hill without any dramas, the next one we came to was steeper. Now I thought I'd give it a go just because I hadn't tried it yet to see what would happen. It was way too hectic, too much stress on my car, wheels were spinning, rocks were flying, dust going everywhere. So after that we realised on the steep hills we just had the winch.
that all I could see was dark. <laughs> We left that car where it was. I tried to get going again with a little bit of difficulty. I was able to get going, get up the top of that hill, and then I came back down to start winching that up. It's nearly six o'clock, long afternoon. <laughs> Been going on this track for over five now, five hours now. No, we winch another car length now, and then we should be able to get to this one by then. Yeah, ran this track for about five hours and done two k's, if that, a k and a half. It's pretty much tow, tow up the little hills, winch up the steep hills, and he can drive through the flattened down hills and bits. Dad's got a Ironman, I think it's nine and a half thousand, nine and a half thousand pound Ironman winch, and it's doing a good job so far. Man, it's done some, done some winching. But the main thing is just keep giving it a rest so you don't burn it out. Just to elaborate on that point about giving the winch a rest, if you hold it the whole way up the hill for minutes at a time, there's a good chance you will burn it out. We were winching for roughly 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. If it was a long winch where we're doing it repeatedly, we'd make those rests a little bit longer, maybe a minute or two. The other point is, why didn't we use a snatch block to double that line pull and make it easier for the winch? Well, we probably could have, but the winch seemed to be doing a good job on its own without worrying about it. We are giving it those regular rests. And if we had to set up a snatch block constantly in all this winching, it would have made it take a whole lot longer. I think I've lost about 10 kilos this afternoon. I've never done so much exercise in my life. Doing all this work in the recovery and filming the whole thing, by the end of the day, I was absolutely exhausted. I've nearly zoned out, like, not zoned out, but before I was thinking when's this over, and now I'm just, I'm just doing it. And like, it just feels like whatever. I'm just used to it already. It feels like this is what I'm going to be doing for the next two days. It was getting late in the day and we are wondering if we are going to be camping on this track for the night. We were hoping we had done all the winching and I could tow him the rest of the way out if there weren't any steep hills. We didn't get much further and there was a big tree across the road. Now there was a track around this tree but the problem was the track around had a really tight turn on it past another tree. Maybe around this? Yeah, it might work. If I pull you forward, yeah, and get me up there. And yeah. then reconnect again. Yeah. yeah, it might work. Not sure if this is a recommended recovery technique, but it meant that we were able to get him around that first tree, hook him up again, keep going on the track without any winching. I've having a good run the last few k's and I was able to tow him all the way. We started coming up out of this track at 12 midday and by the time we got to the end it was just after 7. Honestly when we got out I never felt so happy in my life. Such a good feeling to get out of there back up onto the main road. 
I was in second or third gear low range for most of the towing. That gave me the power to keep him moving along. Once again, you can see here, like I mentioned earlier, that snatch strap being twisted up. We should have had it straight. Definitely fix that up next time. As well as having that dampener blanket on it in case something were to break. <laughs> I just saw you miss call them. What were you calling about? I had to say, how's that for an evening? Yeah, that sunset was good. Oh, that was amazing. Oh, we've done it, cuz. We made it. We was out of there. <laughs> <laughs> we started that track at a bit after 12, where we started going down the hill about 10, 30, 11. We started the track up out of that, down that valley, that Bull Ridge Road about 12. It's now 7 and we've made it back up onto Barrington Tops Forest Road. That was a massive effort. Lots of winching, towing, and him just doing what he could in two-wheel drive. That ended up being one crazy afternoon. But it ended up being a great learning experience, and we both weren't unhappy that we went through it. Samba. Wait, that one says Samba. Is it called Samba? Probably. I'm doing it this way anyway. Dad's gone home. He wanted to just try and get that car out of here. We're going to stay up here because it's already dark, 8 o'clock, like we've still got a three hour drive home. We want dinner and uh, we're at this Devil's Hole camp. The weather's gone terrible, it's kind of misty rain at the moment, but not too bad. We're just going to camp here and then head home in the morning. I would say one on the lake as well. Oh, yeah. Fires are going now. The other bonus of it was we got to spend another night out the bush and the next morning we woke to one of the most spectacular views I'd ever seen out over Devil's Hole Lookout. Obviously do not come this way because then you'll run into the sign saying close whatever it said. This is one of the other ends of that track that's currently closed. This is the other end of that Tuggalo and Thunderbolts trail. Normally you can come through that Devil's Hole camp and keep going through to Gummy Falls, but the whole area is closed. Check out how cool this is. How many meters is this even up? We're up in the sky. Wow. That's awesome. Well, it's Just a forest of clouds. That's so cool. Yeah, that is cool. Just across from Devil's Hole Camp, you can walk over, walked over to Devil's Hole Lookout. You can look out over the valley, but we've got all these clouds. Awesome. There's a reception here too, my phone's buzzing. Probably people wondering where we are because we weren't meant to stay here last night. This is our fourth day out in the bush now. We got here Friday, Friday afternoon, late afternoon. We're still, still here Monday morning. So we're not going to work or school today. Now another thing that people always say is why don't we have lockers or you should get lockers. With my car, I got my car about three years ago and then I spent maybe 10 to 12 grand putting all the modifications on it. And after that I was like, nah, I'm done. There's always more things you want. 
but I just said to myself, I'm just going to be happy with what I got, leave it, and I haven't, like, I haven't really needed lockers. It's, you know, you get to these places, that's what the winch is for. You need to winch up these odd places, but my car's taken me pretty much everywhere without lockers, and, you know, when I first got into it, it wasn't really something I was thinking of. I was thinking about the other things. Now, I definitely would, would have lockers, but I just don't really want to spend the money on it. I'd rather put the money towards trips, going away, and servicing the car pretty much and, and, and um when you were turning 26 i wanted to buy um lockers so i'm, I'm i may get lockers one day may more likely on the next car i think i'm just gonna run this car use this car for what it is just be happy with it dad's car is only recently new he he probably will get lockers on his eventually he wants to get a roof rack set up and a dual battery system and fridge first you know it's hard as always things you want things you need uh, you know you got to just pick what you want the most and go with that first and the last thing I'll say is we just did the best we could with what we knew that's the first time either of, either of us has really had to do something like that we didn't really know the perfect way to do any of it but we got out of there and that was the main thing